In the first scene, funeral director Elliot Deacon, the owner of a funeral bureau, appears. As part of his daily activities, he prepares bodies for funerals, quietly talking to them. At the moment, you can see him preparing the body of an elderly piano teacher. Next, we move on to the middle school teacher, Anna Taylor, who practices rampy pampy with her boyfriend named Paul. Despite the romantic atmosphere, it seems she doesn't like it at all. Later, when she's taking a shower, Paul inquires about what is wrong, but she insists that everything is fine, although her facial expression suggests otherwise. After that, Anna goes to work, where she discovers that two adult children are teasing her young student, Jack. She scolds them and immediately sends them away. After work, Anna exits the school when the lights start flickering in the corridor. Startled, she desperately runs towards the exit, but finds the door locked. In this tense moment, Jack appears and inexplicably opens the door without any issues. That evening, Anna attends the funeral of her former piano teacher at Elliot's house. As she approaches the lifeless body, she sees it moving its mouth, momentarily frightening her. However, upon closer inspection, she realizes that it is normal and understands that it must have been a product of her imagination. Later that same evening, Anna goes to dinner with Paul at a trendy restaurant. During the conversation, he tells her about his promotion at the company's headquarters, which requires him to move to Chicago. He then takes out a ring from his pocket, intending to propose to her and take her with him. But before he can do so, Anna starts arguing, thinking he is about to break up with her. Paul tries to explain the truth, but she leaves without listening. Anna leaves in a distraught state, and in a heavy downpour, she gets involved in a car accident. In the next scene, we see Anna on the embalming table at the funeral home, with a pale face and a wound on her forehead. Shortly after, Elliot enters and begins to prepare her, undressing her in the process. Anna opens her eyes and asks where she is. Elliot calmly responds with astonishment that she is in a funeral bureau and that she is dead. He also reminds her that eight hours ago, she collided with a truck carrying metal pipes, resulting in her death. Confused and frightened, Anna still can't believe that she is dead, despite the assurances of the funeral bureau director that she is just in the process of transitioning to the afterlife. Meanwhile, Paul wakes up in his house and repeatedly tries to contact his girlfriend. However, Anna's belongings are now with Elliot, who ignores the calls and puts them in storage next to the belongings of other corpses. Unable to find her anywhere, Paul goes to her mother's house to find out her whereabouts. To his great surprise, the mother tells him about the tragic incident that led to her death. Moreover, she blames him for letting her drive in such bad weather. Back at the funeral bureau, Elliot stitches up Anna's wounds, and she wonders why she doesn't feel any pain. She asks about it, but he ignores her and administers a fictional drug called hydronym bromide, claiming it will relax her muscles. Sometime later, Anna's mother, confined to a wheelchair, arrives at the funeral bureau to see her. With a tearful voice, she talks to Anna's body, asking who will take care of her now. Before leaving, she asks Elliot to return Anna's hair to its natural chestnut color. Later, Anna wakes up and discovers that she is alone in the room. Gathering her strength, she stands up and approaches the landline and the phone, only to find that it's not working. Just at that moment, Paul appears at the funeral bureau and asks Elliot to let him see his girlfriend. Despite his desperation, the funeral bureau director refuses to let him in because he has no legal ties with her. Upon hearing Paul's voice, Anna screams and knocks on the door, but her efforts go unnoticed. Paul then goes to the police station to meet his friend Tom, hoping he can do something to get him into the funeral bureau. However, another police officer informs him that Tom went on patrol and will return soon. In the meantime, Paul goes to the police impound lot and sits in Anna's wrecked car. During this, he has a vision of his girlfriend, which is abruptly interrupted by Tom's hand. Paul pleads with him to do something to help him reunite with Anna, but Tom is helpless in this regard. On the other hand, Anna wanders around the room and finds another corpse on the table. Unwilling to meet the same fate, Anna grabs a pair of scissors and waits for Elliot. As soon as he enters, she threatens to kill him, but he remains unfazed. He claims that she can't harm him because she is already dead. Anna objects, asking how she can talk to him if she is dead. At that moment, Elliot reveals that she can communicate with him because he has a gift, the ability to communicate with the deceased. He then suggests that she come to terms with her life because her funeral is scheduled for three days later, after which she will be placed in a coffin 
and buried forever. In the next scene, Elliot is preparing the body of an elderly woman for the funeral when Jack joins him, seemingly aware of Anna's death. The boy inquires about her teacher, to which Elliot responds that her funeral is on Friday and asks him to leave for now. The next morning, Paul hears Anna's voice and sees her taking a shower. However, he soon wakes up and realizes it was just a dream. Meanwhile, Elliot returns to Anna with the dress she will wear at her funeral. While he is distracted, she stealthily takes a bunch of keys from his pocket. Later, when Ilya goes to retrieve another dead body from the hospital, Anna hastily uses the stolen keys to try to unlock the door. Elliot stops at a gas station to refuel. It's at this moment that he realizes he forgot his keys. In a hurry, he races back to the funeral bureau. Meanwhile, Anna manages to unlock the door and wanders through the house. Soon, she discovers a room with a phone. Anna quickly dials Paul's number and starts praying for him to pick up. After a long ring, he answers the call but soon hangs up, thinking it's another hallucination. It is precisely at this moment that Elliot finds her and allows her to see her reflection in the mirror, resembling a corpse. This finally makes her believe that she is indeed dead. At the same time, Jack, standing right in front of the house, notices Anna, shocking him. Additionally, another suspicious event occurs. Anna sighs in front of the mirror, causing it to fog up with her breath. However, Elliot skillfully wipes it away before she can notice. Now that she is convinced of her death, Anna stops resisting how Elliot prepares her body and pays no attention to what he gives her. The next day, Paul goes to Anna's school to collect her belongings. When he is about to leave, he is met by Jack, who tells him that he saw Anna in the funeral bureau yesterday, wearing a red dress. Paul doesn't believe it and asserts that she is dead. However, when the boy claims that Paul doesn't love her enough, Paul gets so angry that he slaps him in front of everyone. A police officer arrives at the funeral bureau to see his brother's dead body, kept in the same room with Anna. He then asks Elliot to leave him alone with his brother for a few minutes when the funeral director steps out. The officer's true intentions become evident as he approaches Anna's naked body. But just as he is about to touch her, Elliot enters and asks him to leave. After this, Jack goes back into the funeral bureau and tells Elliot about seeing Anna recently. In response, Elliot calmly states that they both share the ability to communicate with the deceased. On the way home, Paul suddenly remembers the red dress Anna wore the morning before her death. This makes him suspect that his girlfriend might still be alive. He rushes to the funeral bureau, demanding to meet her. However, Elliot refuses. This time, Paul ignores him and bursts inside in search of Anna. He continues searching for her until the funeral director threatens to call the police. Paul then goes to the police station and informs them that his girlfriend is still alive. He also speculates that Anna was injected with a large dose of tranquilizers, slowing her heart rate to a minimum. However, his friend doesn't believe him as he has no evidence to support his claims. Later, Elliot dresses Anna in mourning attire as they have a serious conversation. She confesses that she was never satisfied with her life and couldn't love Paul wholeheartedly. However, she regrets everything now. The scene then transitions to the day of the funeral, where Elliot places Anna in the coffin as he prepares to administer another dose of drugs. She requests permission to look at herself one last time. He lifts a small mirror and as she gazes at herself, she notices her breath condensing on the glass. This makes her realize that Elliot has been lying to her all this time and that she is still alive. In a state of panic, she tries to resist, and Elliot administers the drugs, causing her to lose consciousness. Later, everyone gathers in the funeral hall to pay their last respects to Anna. Shortly after, Paul arrives and puts an engagement ring on her finger. At this moment, her lips and eyelids twitch slightly, and a nervous Elliot decides to close the casket. After her body is buried in the cemetery, a devastated Paul begins to heavily drink. The funeral director approaches him, and Paul accuses him of burying Anna alive. In response, Elliot suggests that he might be right, and advises him to go and check for himself. Angered, Paul reacts aggressively, but before he can attack, Elliot tells him that he doesn't have much time left. Sensing the seriousness of the situation, Paul rushes at full speed to the cemetery. Meanwhile, Anna wakes up inside the coffin, desperately calling for help as her oxygen supply gradually runs out. Despite being in a state of alcohol-induced stupor, Paul manages to dodge several cars on the highway. He arrives at the cemetery and quickly digs up Anna's grave, rescuing her. Somehow, he manages to revive her 
and Anna confesses her love to him. At the same time, Paul hears some strange sounds, and Anna explains that it's the sound of Elliot's scissors cutting his clothes. In the next moment, Paul finds himself in the funeral bureau, and Elliot stands over him, preparing his body just as he did with Anna. Elliot tells him that he never made it to the cemetery due to a car accident in which he died. Paul protests, insisting that he is alive until Elliot inserts an embalming trocar deep into his torso. 